Welcome back to History Class with Dr. W. We're continuing our discussion of American history in the years 1920 to 45. And in lectures leading up to this one, we've talked a good bit about the early period of the 1920s and some of the darker elements of that decade. Things like the Red Scare, racism, the prominence of the Klan, and political corruption. In the lectures that follow, we are finally going to reach perhaps the more familiar aspects of the 1920s and the reason why the decade is sometimes known as the Roaring Twenties. In this lecture, we're going to start by talking about some of the conditions that make that possible, including the soaring economy of that decade. Before we get to a discussion of the economy itself, I want to look at a few pictures from this era just to give everybody a sense of what things looked like at that time. Some of these may be familiar, others less so, but this will give you a sense of what the country was like. So this picture, of course, the cover of Life magazine shows uh, two prominent wealthy individuals doing the famous dance known as the Charleston. This is indicative of the flappers of the era and again, the kind of freewheeling, fun-loving attitude that is so often associated with the 20s. And we're going to talk more about all of this in the lectures to follow. We'll also talk about the automobile industry, which was such a big part of transforming the decade of the 1920s. And on this slide, you see a sampling of what some of the automobiles of that era looked like uh, from the Ford Model A and Model T, which were all very similar to each other, to some of the more exclusive models uh, at the top. Of course, the 20s are also associated with prohibition, and related to that, the prominence and fame of some of the gangsters and criminals of that era. Uh, none more famous, of course, than the man pictured here, Al Capone. And so we'll talk about all of those different elements, including the idea of celebrity and fame and why it is that in some cases it is uh, notorious hardened criminals and even murderers who become some of our biggest celebrities in this era. We looked at automobiles a moment ago, other modes of transportation also undergoing great changes during this time, uh, including the airplane. We're going to talk about Charles Lindbergh and his famous flight across the Atlantic Ocean and uh, the Navy underwent some major modifications during the 1920s. We're going to talk about diplomacy of this period a little bit later in the course. This is also an age of urbanization and a time when revolutions in uh, the capability of building skyscrapers meant that buildings could grow much taller and cities like Chicago and New York City uh, witness the uh, construction of skyscrapers soaring 40, 50, uh, 60 stories into the air and even higher. And so we're going to be talking about some of those developments as we go forward. At the same time, it's important to keep in mind that still half the country remained either living in rural communities or in small towns like the ones you see pictured here. And so this is very much an age of contrast and a time when contradictory lifestyles and worldviews uh, come together in epic clashes like the Scopes Monkey Trial, which we're going to be talking much more about a little bit later in the course, but it represents the confluence of a lot of these fault lines running across the country. In this case, we're looking at the distinction between uh, the big cities and urban lifestyle versus small towns and a rural lifestyle. These images give you a sense of what uh, kind of fashions women were embracing during this period. Of course, for the 1920s, we often think about the flapper, and we're going to talk about that uh, fashion style in just a bit. It's also worth noting that women were participating more in sports. Actually, the clothing you see in this picture uh, was pretty revolutionary for its day, uh, women wearing shorts above the knee uh, and so on. And you see at the top women 
during this era are smoking more frequently, drinking more frequently, uh, going out on the town more, all of which we're going to be talking more about in these lectures. What about the men? Well, these images give you a sense of some of the fashions of the day in terms of what men were wearing. You get a sense from the picture on the left what the state of uh, typical football uniform was at that time. You'll notice uh, not even a face mask on the helmet, just a leather cap. And the pictures on the right give you a sense of what uh, the male physique uh, looked like in that era and what um, businessmen were expected to wear during that time. This is also a time of great invention. Uh, many new electronic appliances are coming on the scene during this time. We're going to talk a lot about uh, lifestyle in the home and how that changes during this era as uh, a lot of tasks are made uh, much easier and much more efficient by a number of the appliances which are coming on the market in this time and becoming more common in the typical American household. And finally, I like to show these pictures just to give a sense of uh, the way some of these appliances looked at that time, uh, which are almost unrecognizable to us now. So you might just look at these and kind of wonder what it is that we're looking at. Now, here on the left, of course, the fact that there is a piece of toast in that toaster <laughs> might give away uh, what it is that we're looking at. But if the toast wasn't in there, it might be hard to recognize that uh, that is actually a toaster. And on the right, uh, the sort of odd-looking gadget there is actually an early hair dryer. So uh, a lot of these kind of appliances were coming on during this time, but many of them bore little resemblance to the equivalent uh, appliances that we have today. Okay, so with that introduction out of the way, we're going to be talking now more in detail about the, uh, the making of the Roaring Twenties. We're going to start by talking about the economy of the 20s, uh, really for a couple of lectures, because the economy is so important to the idea that the 20s were a time of prosperity. And in fact, they were a time of economic prosperity, of moral change, of technological advance, and many exciting things in the realm of popular culture and entertainment, which we're going to be getting to. In particular, the years from 1923 to 29 rank among the most prosperous in the history of the nation. The economy surged and the stock market soared. So let's talk a little bit about what kind of conditions made possible this prosperity. As with so many things related to the 20s, we've got to go back to World War I as we think about these conditions. We talked a lot about the aftermath of the war and its impact. But we haven't really thought much about how it impacted the economy. And so while World War I uh, had ravaged Europe, it actually led to a ramping up of production in the United States. And the wartime experience offered many lessons in mass production and efficiency uh, and left the United States with few competitors abroad, as many other nations were torn apart by the war. The United States really came to rule the global economy during this time. And in particular, taking out of the wartime experience, companies in the 20s built on what they had learned about mass production, mechanization, and efficiency. We're going to talk shortly about the Ford Motor Company, which kind of headed the charge in this realm. But in general, American industry came out of World War I operating at peak efficiency. Related to this was a growing sense of expertise and professionalism in industry. Businesses were hiring more engineers, more research men, statisticians, and the like to streamline business and increase profitability. While it's a modern phrase, more businesses were developing R&D departments, research and development, thinking about the future rather than just operating randomly in the present. Nothing happened by accident anymore. Leading the way in the 1920s was the automobile industry, the industry that transformed the country during this time. 
much as the railroads had done in the era after the Civil War and as televisions and computers would do in later years. So it's not only the automobile itself that transformed the nation and transformed the economy, but cars drove dozens of other major industries, from rubber that was obviously uh, used in making the tires and some other parts, to metal, to gasoline, to road construction, roadside restaurants and attractions, street signs, stoplights, and so on. Some four million Americans were employed by these kinds of industries associated with the automobile. By 1929, about half of all American families owned at least one car, uh, making for about 23 million cars on the roads at that time. By the end of the decade, the automobile had become the center of American life. Many Americans are now driving to work. We're going to talk a little bit about tourism and travel, which is a brand new industry with the advent of the automobile. Dating is also transformed by the automobile, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Just imagine our lives today without automobiles, and that's the kind of transformation that was occurring in the 1920s. Whole cities were created by this industry, and others were dramatically increased by the automobile industry. We think about Detroit, which is nicknamed the Motor City. Uh, the basketball team from Detroit is called the Pistons. So uh, the population of Detroit was about 285,000 in 1900. That's a sizable city. But it was 1.5 million by 1930. Now Henry Ford, of course, dominated the automobile industry. And he's most famous for his implementation of the production line and efficiency in production. The huge complex known as River Rouge in Dearborn, Michigan was at the forefront of the Ford motor uh, industry. This plant had its own port, its own steel mill, its own power plant, and employed some 75,000 workers. You get a, This is a picture of the River Rouge plant, and you might be able to make out there's even a railroad uh, heading into the factory. So all aspects of the construction of the automobiles were done in this one plant. The emphasis was on efficiency, uh, machinery, and the production line. So Ford Motor Company was heading the charge, but there were many automobile companies and Ford had a number of serious competitors, uh, the most significant of which was General Motors, which produced fancier models for upscale consumers, uh, including the Cadillac, which of course becomes uh, symbolic for success and achievement in American life. The Ford automobile was uh, designed and made for the working man, and in fact Ford emphasized the fact that his own employees could afford the cars that they were building. Uh, General Motors and others appealed to a more select audience. In the next lecture, we'll talk more about the 1920s economy and the making of the Roaring Twenties.